Hello and welcome to The Print. Today we are standing at the National Institute of Ocean Technology here in Chennai. This is the institute under the Ministry of Earth Sciences that's responsible for building India's first manned submersible mission called the Matsya 6000 under Samudrayaan. In fact, as we speak, researchers and scientists at the university are conducting integration tests on this 28-ton vehicle that's going to carry three people down 6,000 meters into the Indian Ocean in the Central Indian Ocean region by the end of 2026. This manned submersible mission is going to be the first time that India has ever sent people that deep down into the ocean and also the first time that any people have ever gone into the Central Indian Ocean in that particular region. It's the fruit of three decades of labour by the NIOT, which is the only organisation in India that works on ocean technology. And it's going to carve a niche for India's ocean technology because it's going to put us on the map with only six other countries having achieved this feat before. According to the 50 or so scientists that have been working on the Samudrayaan mission at NIOT, the biggest challenge of building the vehicle has been to adapt it to the hydraulic pressure experienced in the deep ocean. They take the ocean. Uh, as you go down into the ocean, you can see the pressure increases at the rate of every one bar every 10 meters. Okay. And moreover, uh, as you go below 1000 meters, the temperature will be fairly 2 degrees centigrade. This combined effect of uh, this temperature as well as the high pressure is a very, very risky thing. And we have to design our systems to adapt to these environmental conditions, which is harsh environmental conditions. Put it in uh, very simple terms, uh, even the bolt, which will go as part of this mission, is not only designed to withstand the 600 bar pressure, it is being tested extensively based on the international protocols and it is also being scrutinized, vetted, double-checked, triple-checked by the, uh, uh, the scientific committee as well as the international community as well. The NIOT has been around since 1993 and when it comes to building submersibles, in India they are unbeatable. However, while putting together the elements for Matsya 6000, which you can see behind me, the one thing that was on the minds of these experts of ocean technology is the human factor. How are they going to make this the safest and most secure trip for the three crew members that will take this perilous journey? So whether it's the battery life or the life support systems, the 67 oxygen cylinders that have been kept inside the sphere for the humans to use or even the navigation and communication system. The one thing that unites all of this is its tailored approach towards the humans or the crew members that will take this journey. So we have uh, various uh, risk mitigation systems such as the emergency rescue and locate systems where the submersible can be identified where it has uh, uh, you know where there is a problem and then we have systems to uh, ret retrieve it back to the deck very easily and to aid this uh, process we have a uh, digital twin also to support us in uh, hard to predict scenarios okay. which a conventional uh, pilot or a conventional uh, mission director cannot do. Project director Veda Chalam refers to India's Matsya 6000 as a fourth generation manned submersible to differentiate it from the submersibles made previously by the other six countries that have sent people down into the deep ocean. There are certain unique features in this submersible that can aptly qualify it as beginning a new generation of manned missions to the deep ocean. We have a drop weight system which is highly reliable and we call it as a human rated one. It means that uh, you know uh, the design is such a way that, that it, it will never fail. The second thing what we have is that we have redundant, redundant voice communication and data communication with the submersible when it is in the mission and we have very specialized batteries called lithium polymer batteries, pressure compensated ones which can be work under pressure and then we have a very rugged control and propulsion architecture, navigation architecture, positioning architecture and also we are having a bio waste facility like the Isolos Gaganyan program where we monitor the health of the crew and we transmit the key health parameters to the ship in real time. Okay. That will help the mission director to take a call in case of any health issues and all for the people so the mission can go safely. It isn't just human systems in Matsya 6000 that are state of the art though. 
the electricity source used by the vehicle is being used for the first time ever by any deep sea vehicle in the history of the earth yeah 6000 we have been using a special kind a state of the art lithium polymer batteries of course it is different from all the submersibles in the world of this depth actually uh, it is pressure balanced oil filled batteries which goes up to the depth of 6000 meters it has a different technology and also in terms of gravimetric and volumetric density in terms of weight and in terms of volume when compared to conventional batteries of course most of the submersibles are using conventional batteries um, this is the first time we have been using these kind of batteries which gives the space advantage weight advantage volume advantage of course and five to six times when compared to conventional lead acid batteries samudrayaan now nears its first major milestone as the wet test or harbor test for the matsya 6000 vehicle is scheduled to take place early next week this is the test of the entire vehicle in sea water to check whether it is functioning properly camera lights now actually in a dry condition we have we will be testing at our facility then we need to do the functionality test in water that's called wet test of matsya first wet test of matsya will be carried out very soon at kattupalli port to test the functionality of the crew model with life support system all the uh, power sources uh, camera lights other sub system everything will be tested for its functionality while the first crewed mission of samudrayaan will act as the demonstration dive the niot does have a plan to expand research through the access provided by matsya 6000 The purpose of the mission goes beyond mining for polymetallic nodules in the sea floor. The NIOT representing India has received permission from the International Seabed Authority to carry out exploration of the deep sea and the ocean bed in the Central Indian Ocean region. So all of the work of the remotely operated vehicles and even of Matsya 6000 is only to explore and advance scientific research. in that region of the world's oceans having seen our growth and also the capability to demonstrate any technology in the marine environment in this part of the world i think ministry was uh, you know kind of uh, you know, confident that we will be able to pull this uh, off by our own style and this is being entrusted to us a couple of years back and we also believe that this particular mission project will not only enhance our understanding better within the campus and through this effort we also strongly believe that we disseminate this knowledge in a great extent we already started working on the outreach programs and we are spreading this you know development uh, to academic uh, not only iits and nits but also lot num- lot many number of private institutions as well so we already started spreading this way we strongly believe that the outreach program and the efforts of our campus will spread the knowledge base and i'm sure there will be lot many youngsters will also come forward like isro attracted uh, towards the you know aerospace probably will also attract towards the marine space that's the that's the ultimate goal of uh, the the mission project as well in my opinion to that extent Matsya 6000 also has the scientific payloads to bring back samples of the earth and the water from that deep in the ocean. They also have installed the capacity in the submersible to measure the salinity, the oxygen levels, the temperature levels in that region and the general atmosphere, the features of the water 6000 meters deep. But what NIOT has planned for Matsya 6000 is that After the first demonstration dive, the future dives are going to be structured in a way that the third person, the observer along with the two pilots in the mission is going to be someone from a different scientific field. So, a physicist or a marine biologist or a metallurgy expert, basically anyone that's interested in studying the deep ocean will be allowed to do so with India launching its own manned submersible mission. So while NIOT's Matsya 6000 is definitely a stride for India's ocean technology community, it's also going to help India's scientific community in a number of ways. This is Akanksha Mishra reporting for the print.